Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to the October 27th, 2022 monthly meeting of the Henrico County School Board. The first item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? I move that the school board approve the agenda for today's meeting. Moved by Ms. Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Kinsella. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The agenda is approved. Madam Chair, members of the board, good evening, and to our visitors, welcome. We will start our meeting this evening, as we always do, with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I am so proud to introduce guests from Trevet Elementary School. Principal Neal will come forward and introduce the students um, who are going to lead us in the pledge. And uh, we will, as they come up, when they uh, begin the pledge, you can come on up, you can make your way. Don't be shy. <laughs> uh, that'll be followed by a moment of silence. Good evening. I am Mrs. Neal, the principal at Trevette Elementary School, and I am so proud to present our SEA officers. I have Thomas, Reagan, Additive, and Janet. Please begin. which can be used by those in att attendance for pr prayer or reflection. That concludes our moment of silence. You may be seated and thank you so much to the students who led the pledge. You did a fantastic job. Yes, I just can't lean down. <laughs> and as the board makes their way uh, to the seats in the front, we're pleased to introduce our performance highlight. Mr. Mosley's coming uh, forward to introduce our student performers uh, from Tucker High School who will be under the direction of Clint Miller. All right, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Cashwell, colleagues and guests. My name is Christopher Mosley. I am the Education Specialist for Performing Arts. It is my pleasure to introduce for our performance highlight this evening, the J.R. Tucker High School Sounds Unlimited under the direction of Mr. Clint Miller. Uh, Mr. Miller is in his 22nd year teaching and his 16th year at J.R. Tucker. He's a member of the National Association for Music Education, the Virginia Choral Directors Association, and the Virginia Music Educators Association. Tonight they will perform two selections, trying not to mess this up, uh, Barter by Frank DeWald and Shoujo He, a Japanese folk song. Okay, please help me welcome to the stage, J.R. Tucker Sounds Unlimited.
another big thanks to our students who led us in the pledge as well as our student performers from Tucker High School. One more round of applause. Thank you so much for being here. Next item, introduction of visitors. I do want to note that Mike Taylor, our CEO of the Henrico Education Foundation is with us this evening. Thank you so much for being here and for your ongoing support. Our next item is the Henrico highlight. And this month, uh, learning takes flight at Gayton Elementary with the release of endangered monarch butterflies. The butterflies were nurtured by students as caterpillars, then tagged and recorded as part of an effort to follow the migration and repopulation of the orange colored beauties. In the process of caring for the butterflies, something. When they leave here this morning, they will try to fly 25 miles. This is Milkweed, and today we got to watch the butterfly, we got to take the butterflies out of their cage and let them fly free so that they can fly down to Mexico. So this one is number five. I had an idea to write a grant uh, to improve the social emotional learning opportunities for students post-COVID. So as a school community, what can we do to reestablish these relationships that were fractured during COVID and to make kids ha feel that they have a purpose when they're outside of recess? This weedy little patch of milkweed has probably produced 40 or so monarch butterflies. I planted it in the spring, I left it alone, the butterflies found it, the caterpillars are on it. It was very fun, very exciting when it was about to hatch. We all wanted to go inside very quickly for, uh, from recess so we can see it. Not only are we helping build their social emotional skills and their science skills, but here in this garden, we're also making them stewards of the earth. It's really cool because, like, I know that these um, animals, they're endangered. They're, they're an endangered species, so it was really cool to, like, be able to, like, help them, like, thrive so that they don't, like, you know, go inst extinct. With the tags that we have from Monarch Watch, all the butterflies we released have tags and numbers. We'll be recording those on the app. If somebody out there spots one, they'll report it to the app too, and I'll get a notification that one of the gate and butterflies that was released um, has been sighted. That's amazing for their weight. And when they just hatched and they're going 25 miles, that's amazing because they just hatched. We, I think, have just noticed a change or a shift in our classroom communities where the kids are gelling together, they're starting to talk to each other more, and they feel bonded. You can also see the dimple right here on this side and that side. There's a little dimple. So each year, Monarch Watch distributes about 250,000 butterfly tagging kits. So we will update you on the travels and sightings of the Gaten butterflies once their data is collected. And before we move on, I want to let you know that in addition to our instructional highlight each month, we will also begin celebrating staff members, students, and community partners who embody the spirit and service that are the hallmarks of Henrico County Public Schools. Through their acts, big and small, they uplift our schools, making our community a better place to learn and live. These amazing men and women are the heart of Henrico. This month, we are proud to recognize our incredible team of bus drivers as we celebrate Bus Driver Appreciation Day and School Transportation Week. Let's watch. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thanks for getting me to school safe. Thank you for driving us home. Thank you for going the extra mile. We have the best bus drivers. You're really great. We really do appreciate you. We love our bus drivers. Happy School Bus Driver Appreciation Day. Thank you so much for getting me to school safe. Thank you for taking us to school and home safely. Thanks for keeping us all safe and make sure none of us get hurt on the bus. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, bus drivers. Thank you for um, making sure we are always getting home safe. You made my heart feel um, good and feel joy. And Ryko has the best bus drivers. Happy School Bus Appreciation Day. Thank you! No doubt our incredible transportation staff embody the heart of Henrico. We're so grateful for all they do. Madam Chair, members of the board, that concludes our highlights for this month. Thank you, Dr. Cashwell. Reverend Cooper, would you please read our Henrico mission statement? Yes, ma'am. Henrico County Public Schools, an innovative leader in educational excellence, will actively engage our students in diverse educational, social, and civic learning experiences that inspire and empower them to become contributing citizens. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is the public forum. This is a time when citizens are invited to address the school board on any matter of concern about the school division. Citizens have signed up in advance and will be given two minutes to address the school board. Speakers will be called in order in which they signed up and may not relinquish their spot to someone else. We ask that each speaker come to the microphone and clearly state your name and school affiliation, if applicable, and the subject of your remarks before speaking. After stating your name, please place the number you were given in the cart next to the podium. Speakers must be present, our speakers must present their remarks to the school board and not to the audience and may provide copies of their comments to the school board clerk if you would like. The use of obscenity or defamation is strictly prohibited and will be ruled out of order. To insist you in tracking your time to address the school board, there's a timekeeping system display, displaying the elapsed time on the screen. Speakers will also receive a notification from myself when the time has expired. The school board is here to hear from you today. We will not be responding to speakers' concerns or questions during the public forum. However, Enrico staff member will follow up with speakers. Stakeholders also have the opportunity to provide written comments through an online form in advance of the meeting. There were no written comments submitted for this meeting. We appreciate your attendance here this evening and for providing your input. Could we please have speaker number one? Good evening, my name is Jill Rich and I am a family consumer science teacher at Brooklyn Middle School. Um, Tuesday evening at Tucker High School, I had the opportunity to hear Jamie Mead discuss her research on hope. I believe all the leadership at HCPS um, read her book this summer and heard her speak. I appreciated how she described hope as more than emotion. She broke hope down into three aspects, a goal, a pathway, an agency. When one or more parts of hope become distorted or seem impossible, a person is left feeling angry, and if unchecked, then despair and finally apathy. Ms. Mead stressed that as educators, we can share our hope with our students who are struggling to find their own hope. What I realized as she was speaking is that I'm angry. I'm angry, and I was angry before the events of last week's violence at Brooklyn Middle School. My goal as a teacher, and as per our contract, is to create a safe and differentiated learning environment. 
I love teaching, and I love my students. It is a privilege every single day that I get to be in the classroom. But my pathway to reaching my goal is full of obstacles. The standards in the Code of Conduct continue to be lowered as if our students need lower expectations. Effective discipline isn't happening in the classroom and is crippled by disruptive students who are not facing the consequences of their choices. Our admin are busy covering classes and trying to keep up with discipline issues as it is. Lately, I'm struggling with the lack of support. I've been fortunate in that in the last week, I've only had to cover five times. Twice, I've oversaw two advisory classes at the same time because we had so many teachers out and no subs. We're asked to cover classes instead of planning or grading, which pushes those activities to our evenings and our weekends. Thank you. Um, would you, um, we would love to hear the rest of your remarks. If you wouldn't mind um, sending them to the board so we can make sure we read them and digest them. Thank you for your remarks and your service. Speaker number two. Hi, <laughs> my name is Megan Hyatt. I'm speaking to you as a Henrico resident um, and former HCPS employee. Um, and I'm speaking about elementary integrated services and early childhood special education. I'm also here with the HEA. This very well me may be my last speech in front of this body. My last day as an integrated services teacher was this past Friday. Leaving was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever made. I left because I got an opportunity to make a more far-reaching impact that could not be ignored. Once I decided to leave, I finally was able to identify the impact being a teacher has had on my mental and physical health. As a teacher, I often didn't get a lunch or a planning time, not because I didn't have it scheduled, but because an IA would be out and we lacked coverage, because I had multiple grade levels in my room that made it so I didn't have a time where there weren't any kids in my room because of behavior. I worried that if I left my room, a staff member might get hurt. And many IS and ECSE teachers don't even have lunch or planning on their schedule. I was very fortunate. I've often spoken in front of this body and I worry that it may seem that I'm the only one who feels this way. I can assure you I am not. Many teachers, especially provi provisionally licensed or board substitutes, feel afraid to speak up. Often, I'm speaking on behalf of the silent majority, my friends, my colleagues. After my speech last month, I was very thankful to speak with the assistant director of XED and one of the XED supervisors, and I believe they will do what they can to make changes, but I believe something needs to change from above that level. There needs to be more instructional assistance. They need to be paid more, and they need to be full-time. IS and ECSE teachers having the proper support to leave their rooms for lunch and planning would be a good start to alleviate the high burnout rate and turnover in these valuable and challenging positions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Speaker number three. <clears throat> Good evening, school board members and Dr. Cashwell. My name is Liz Broda, and I'm a history teacher and department chair at Henrico High School. I'm also a proud member of the HEA. I'm here tonight to share with you an experience I had just last week. Uh, we have weekly school quality meetings, or monthly school quality meetings, and in last week's meeting, we were joined by several central office staff members who were giving feedback on the plans and our progress. My colleagues from the math department shared that they plan to organize some extra tutoring for senior students who still need to pass a math SOL before graduation. My principal agreed, but advised the chairs to be careful about when tutoring was gonna be scheduled. Teachers needed to be pulled to tutor during their duty periods so that a substitute wouldn't be needed to cover their class. We are all very well aware of the current sub shortage in our building and across the county. A member of the central office staff gave some feedback after this presentation, and one comment she made has stuck with me for a week. Instead of addressing the consistently frustrating shortage of subs, the staff person asked our principal what incentives were being offered to teachers to actually come to school in the first place. 
This staff member argued that too many teachers were playing hooky and that their students were negatively impacted by it. She made it seem like a donut in our mailbox or an extra jeans day would fix this assumed problem of teachers not attending school. I don't know the staff member's name, her title, or the office she works in. I don't need to. While she may have not intended to be so demeaning, the message had been sent. The teachers weren't doing enough. Unfortunately, this message is one that is regularly communicated to educators across the county. And when we are charged with more duties or our planning period time is taken away again, it's bright in our eyes. If that central office staff member is genuinely looking for incentives, it would be to treat us like professionals and to be respected to do our jobs well and with purpose. We're doing the best we can as much as we can, and we don't deserve to be accused of otherwise. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaker number four. Good evening, members of the school board. My name is Dana Morris. I am a high school art teacher at Highland Springs High School, and I'm an active member of the Henrico Education Association. I'm here to discuss the eight period school schedule in regards to Virginia law. Uh, stating in code 8VAC20-131-240, administrative and support staff staffing requirements, a middle school classroom teacher standard load. Ms. Morris, can you pause for just a second? Can you either turn the mic up or speak into it? And if we could reset her time just to make sure that we're um, gi giving you your, your full full time and then you make it continue. Thank you so much. All right, I appreciate that. Thank, is that better? Thank you. Is that better, colleagues? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm here to discuss the eight period school schedule in regards to Virginia law. In section 8 VAC 20-131-240, administrative and support staff staffing requirements, a middle school classroom teacher's standard load shall be based on teaching no more than the instructional day minus one planning period per day, or the equivalent with no more than 150 students or 25 class periods per week. If a middle school student, or if a middle school classroom teacher teaches more than 150 students or 25 class periods per week, an appropriate contractual arrangement and compensation shall be provided. Section F states the same information, but in regards to secondary classroom teachers. So if a middle or secondary teacher has 150 or more students in their overall caseload, an appropriate contractual arrangement and compensation shall be provided. Well, I have searched the HCPS website looking for this information. I have reached out to my administration and I have emailed the HCPS payroll and still have not received any clear answers. Payroll did respond saying, quote, we have not been given that information as of yet, should be processing in the November pay, end quote. How does payroll not have access to this information? Why is this information not provided to teachers and staff? Is the compensation even equitable among teachers? The lack of clarity within contracts and lack of transparency concerning this compensation will lead to pay disparity amongst HCPS educators. The eight period schedule has caused a gap among teachers in terms of student caseloads and associated workload. I am asking for the compensation information to be made publicly available now. And to all HCPS educators and staff, Fair compensation and contract language are issues that can be negotiated with collective bargaining. In solidarity, and thank you. Thank you. Speaker number five. Speaker number six. Confirming that neither speaker number five or speaker number six are present. Thank you, that concludes our period of public comment. Again, thank you for each of you for taking time to attend tonight and share your input. The next item on the agenda is the approval of consent items. First of all, are there any requests from school board members that an item be separated for school board discussion or individual action? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent items? I move that the school board accept, approve, and or award items 8.01 through 8.07 on the consent agenda as presented. Moved by Ms. Ogburn, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Reverend Cooper. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Items 8.01 through 8.07 on the consent, ag item, consent agenda are approved. 
The next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Colleagues, do you have any unfinished business? The next item on the agenda is new business. Colleagues, do you have any new business? Hearing none, the school board's next meeting will be a work session scheduled on Thursday, November 10th, 2022 at 1 o'clock p.m. and a monthly meeting at 6.30 p.m. Meeting times may be adjusted if needed. This meeting is adjourned.